The Buffalo is one of the early examples of mine protected vehicles, shortly MPV. It saved the lives of many South African troops in Southwest Africa and Angola, and its success has paved the way for embracing the concept internationally. Now, we are investigating the Buffalo, a weird looking, uncomfortable, but beloved armored vehicle. Please don't forget to subscribe to our channel before we start, and give us a thumbs up if you like our video. To be notified of our new videos, please click the bell button. Also, you can now click the join button to support our channel. And as always, we would greatly appreciate all the likes, comments and shares. The Buffalo is a highly successful but relatively little known vehicle. Thanks to its effectiveness, the MPV concept has been accepted globally. Yet, due to these achievements, many open sources on the internet tend to exaggerate the Buffalo. It would be too overblown to say that it was the first ever mass produced or first truly effective MPV. There were also many successful vehicles before it. In the 1960s, South Africa carried out concept studies on the MPV and it fitted a V-shaped monocoque body with an angle of 43 degrees on a second World War vintage Swedish SKPF VKPF M42 wheeled armored vehicle. But these years, the landmine threat was not a priority and the project was not resumed. The rest of the story is a little bit complicated. There is a lot of different data available in many different sources. We tried to confirm them as best as we could. Do not hesitate to share your information on the subject in the comments section. The real adventure began with the Land Rover tactical vehicle based Hyena and the Unimog truck based Wolf. They were developed and produced by South Africa in 1973 to use in Rhodesia. The Rhodesian engineers developed their indigenous MPV, the Land Rover based Moon Buggy in the same year which was followed by the Leopard and Rhino. In the same years, the South West Africa People's Organization, which was fighting an insurgency against South Africa for the independence of South West Africa, increased the use of the landmines against the South African Defense Force, shortly as ADF. So, in 1973, South Africa developed the Boswar, a Unimog s track with a V-shaped rear top. Besides, it had mine detonation blast deflection plates under the driver compartment but the vehicle could not protect the crew from small arms fire. Besides, South Africa developed the Bedford RL-based Hippo in 1974. All these not-so-successful Rhodesian and South African vehicles had limited capabilities. The first truly effective MPV was the Land Rover Series 3S-based Rhodesian Kudu, which entered service in 1975. Also known as OJ, it would save 261 of 267 soldiers in 58 landmine attacks until 1980. Rhodesia also began to use the Crocodile in 1977 and the MAP-75 in 1978. These highly successful vehicles did the same job as the Buffalo. So, it was not the first ever mass-produced or the first truly effective MPV. The development of the Buffalo began in 1976 to replace the Hippo, which had an unpopular layout and poor visibility. Using the feedback from the combat reports in Angola, Southwest Africa and Rhodesia, the South African engineers began to design the improved version of the Boswar in 1976. They presented a wooden mock-up of the new MPV called Boswar II to the SADF in April of the same year. After several trials, some improvements were implemented. For example, unlike the Unimog s track based Boswar, the Boswar 2 was built on the more advanced Unimog 416-162 track. The result was satisfactory. In 1977, the SADF ordered the new MPV, now called Buffalo. The vehicle entered service in 1978. The armored driver compartment of the Buffalo, separated from the armored troop compartment, was on the front left while the engine compartment was on the right. The engineers preferred commercially off-the-shelf parts as much as possible, which reduced the logistical requirements and production costs of the MPV. The design also allowed quick repair after post-mine hit and easy maintenance in field conditions. As the Buffalo was simply a modified truck, any truck driver and mechanics could drive and maintain the vehicle with a short training. Also, a wheeled armored vehicle had fewer maintenance requirements and costs than a tracked one. It was essential for the SADF. The Buffalo was designed to save lives, not provide comfort. There was no door on the open troop compartment. The soldiers had to climb up and down via two incremental pairs of steel steps on either side to embark and disembark the MPV. There were horizontally hinged folding panels on the left and right sides of the troop compartment to ease leaving the vehicle during the action. 
The early model of the Buffalo did not even have a door for the driver, so he had to enter and leave the cab through the open top roof. The driver compartment of the later variants was fitted with a single door and two steel steps on the left side beside a high density polyethylene roof cover. The Buffalo was a tall vehicle with high ground clearance. This design made it relatively unbalanced. So, during the move, the troop compartment was severely shaken depending on the rough terrain or high speed. For this reason, the South African troops nicknamed the Buffalo Kotzkoets, which means vomit carriage. Besides, in some occasions, this design caused the vehicle to roll over during high speed sharp turns. It was risky to drive the Buffalo on uneven or slippery terrain. Still, the Buffalo protected the crew from landmine hits excellently. Its V shaped hull deflected the blast quite effectively. The MPV was resistant to the detonation of one TM57 anti tank mine with a 7 kg TNT equivalent explosive under the hull or two TM57 under any wheel. The seats had a special design to protect the crew from the effects of a mine blast. There were anti roll bars over the troop compartment's top to compensate during a possible rollover. There is still an ongoing debate about the 100 liter water tank under the Buffalo's hull. Some sources claim that it provided extra protection against landmines, while others say that this tank was only for water supply for the soldiers during the long patrols. Indeed, it is known that the water does not absorb the blast effect. On the other hand, increasing the weight might help counterbalance the anti-tank mine detonation that caused a 60-ton vehicle like the Buffalo to leap meters into the air. During the South African border war, the SADF sometimes filled the wheels of the MPV with water to increase the weight but it is known that this practice was to make the vehicle more stable. The section leader generally sat on the front left of the troop compartment to better communicate with the driver. The Buffel was fitted with one forward-looking and one rear-looking machine guns. They were single-barrel weapons in general use. But the Buffel was occasionally equipped with twin-barrel machine guns with armored shields. Thanks to the circular grooves on both sides, the soldiers could use their rifles from their seats. The early variants of the Buffalo had the Mercedes-Benz OM352 diesel engine of the Unimog. The later models were equipped with the licensed production variant of this engine manufactured by Atlantis diesel engines. The MPV had satisfactory cross-country mobility for the African savannas. Designed for long-range patrol and transport missions, the Buffalo had a range of 1000 km on the roads. But its off-road range was 500 km. The MPV had a sizable storage box on the rear. The vehicle was constantly upgraded. The Buffalo Mark I had an improved engine and a bush guard to drive through small trees and heavy brush rather than going around them. The Mark I B variant was fitted with disc brakes instead of drum brakes. The logistic cargo version of the MPV was the Leuch Buffalo. It had a truck bed which replaced the troop compartment. The vehicle could carry 2.6 tons of cargo. The Buffalo Mark II A, also known as Muffle, was the variant with an enclosed troop compartment. Due to this change, it had a rear exit door and a large bulletproof windows on the sides and rear. The Mark II A was the rebuilt variant of Mark I's for urban operations. The Buffalo also had non-serial ambulance, mortar carrier and self-propelled anti-aircraft gun versions. In the 1980s, South Africa began to produce the Samuel 20, whose design was based on the Unimog chassis. Later, this truck was also converted to MPV with similar modifications applied to the Buffalo. The new vehicle, called Bulldog, was preferred only by the South African Air Force for the missions of patrolling around the bases. Still, its 20mm self-propelled anti-aircraft gun variant, the A Stirfar, was operated by the Army. Sri Lanka, which acquired the Buffalo, also developed the indigenous variants of the vehicle. The Unicorn is a variant based on the Tata commercial truck with the same modifications applied to the Buffalo. The Unibuffel is a Buffalo variant with the Tata engine. In some military parades in Sri Lanka, some different models of the Unibuffel with the 30mm twin barrel GCM-A or the 25mm Typhoon 25 gun turrets have been seen. Also, there is one vehicle with Gabriel anti-ship missiles. However, it is unclear whether these weapon systems were mounted on the Unibuffel for naval weaponry demonstration or operational use. Sri Lanka and Uganda are the current users of the Buffel. Namibia, South Africa and Zimbabwe retired the vehicle. Also, the United Nations is still operating the Buffalo in some of its missions in Africa. The Buffalo has a one-person crew which is the driver but it can also carry 10 infantry. 
The vehicle has a length of 5.1 meters, a width of 2.05 meters and a height of 3 meters. Its combat weight is about 6.1 tons. The 125 horsepower Atlas diesel OM352 diesel engine provides a road speed of 96 km per hour. Its range is 1000 km. The Buffalo can negotiate 0.6 meter vertical steps and fort to a depth of 1 meter. It can be fitted with 5.56 mm or 7.62 mm machine guns. During the South African Border War, which is also known as Angolan Bush War, the Buffalo played an essential role in battles and in counterinsurgency operations. It transported the troops and supplies to the front line and evacuated the wounded. During the long range counterinsurgency operations, four to six Buffaloes carried a hunter killer platoon long distances from the bases. The MPVs also brought enough food, water and ammunition to the operation areas for a week. Then the soldiers began to patrol on foot for three to seven days. Since the South West Africa People's Organization laid landmines on possible routes, the Buffalo were the best solution for such deployments. The Buffalo managed to save the lives of the South African troops countless times even though they hit landmines on many occasions. This vehicle and its Sri Lankan variants have also proved themselves in the civil war in this country. Sri Lanka also deployed its Unibuffels in Tumale in 2020. The success of the Buffalo played a significant role in the MPV's acceptance globally, now known as AMRAP. It has made South Africa the leading brand in the world in this field. The Buffalo, soldier's guardian angel against mines, is undoubtedly a true legend. Thanks for watching our video. And please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and click the bell button to be notified of our new videos. Also, you can now click the join button to support our channel. And as always, we would greatly appreciate all the likes, comments and shares.